Your time is over, Batman. Gotham's evil has flourished under your reign. The wicked have prospered and the innocent condemned. The Batman Who Kills, Asriel Origin Explored. Over the years, fans have seen Batman in many different shapes and forms, played by many people. However, when someone steps up to the mantle of the Dark Knight himself, they better live up to it. Today, we'll be taking a look at the infamous DC character, Asriel, who shares a name with a mythological figure in various Abrahamic religions, such as Islam and some Jewish traditions. Asriel is the name of the Angel of Death. Asriel is most well known for being Batman's failed successor, who later becomes a deadly villain as he seeks down and executes escaped Arkham Asylum inmates. After Batman's back was broken by Bane in the popular Nightfall storyline, Asriel had taken over as Batman's replacement. However, that did not last long and he was forcibly removed. He was created to give the Batman title a more anti-hero edge, but now the one-time Dark Knight successor has crossed the line into a full-on villainy. Today we'll take a look at his origin story in association with the Dark Knight. Before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Azrael, the Angel of Death, Origin Explored. Azrael is a fairly insignificant figure in the wider Batman mythos. He debuted in the early 1990s. Although he never gained the ubiquity of other 1990s Batman's characters, such as Bane and Harley Quinn, the character was not included in Batman, the animated series, nor did he appear in any of the character-based films released in the 1990s or earlier decades of the 20th century. Azrael, on the other hand, isn't completely forgotten. After Nightfall, Azrael would get his own 100-ish comic book series, which would continue through late 90s Batman storylines like Cataclysm and No Man's Land. Denny O'Neill, Azrael's creator, would write him continuously over the life of the eight-year monthly series. Azrael creeps on the outskirts of the Batman realm. The fact that he is a violent anti-hero explains why he has yet to appear in family-friendly Batman media such as The Brave and The Bold or The Batman. Azrael has even established himself as a legacy character in his own right. Even though there was some doubt surrounding Jean Paul Valley's fate at the end of the monthly series, a new Azrael will arrive soon. This is the story of Azrael. From the moment he was conceived, he was a test tube baby. Scientists used animal DNA to change Jean Paul's genetic structure, allowing him to perform things that would be impossible for a normal person. He grew up unaware of his broader role and enrolled at Gotham University to study programming. When his father, the previous Azrael, crawled bleeding to his apartment in costume one night after being mortally wounded by Leia, he learned of his family's legacy. His father provided him the money and the means to travel to Switzerland and meet with the Order of St. Dumas, who would provide him with his training, before requesting that his body be deposited somewhere where the family secrets would not be revealed. Paul Valley, aka Azrael, makes his debut appearance in Batman, Sword of Azrael, and the series has four issues. While Jean Paul looks on, the elder man, dressed in a strange garb, gives his son a parting list of instructions before passing away. Following his father's orders, Jean Paul finds him himself in a frenzied, blood-soaked race through Europe with Batman, Alfred Pennyworth, and Nomus, a grumpy dwarf. Their mission? To stop a renegade member of the Order of St. Dumas, of which Jean-Paul's father was a member and of whom Nomus is a member, from going on a murderous rampage. As one would, he makes his way to the Swiss Alps to fulfill his father's instructions. In the Alps, a man by the name of Nomus told Valley about Azrael's obligations and revealed that, despite his meek demeanor, he was already a capable warrior who only needed a few months of intensive workout to build up his body, having been unintentionally sufficiently conditioned. His conditioning is the consequence of a process known as the system, the full implications of which have never been fully explained on the human psyche. The first issue of the series follows Young Valley's journey and how he is practically bombarded with information, none of which he knew before and all of which led him to becoming a bringer of death for a centuries-old order his father had dedicated his life to. He is shown a sigil and initiated into the order as the angel possesses him, giving him insane power and knowledge of combat. This was the creation of Azrael, the mild-mannered computer science major, Valley became an expert combatant ready to take on anyone. The Order was evil as we can clearly see in the series. The Order of St. Dumas is a religious organization that originated during the Crusades as a former branch of the Knights Templar. Before the Templars were suppressed, the Order had fallen out with them and left. The Order dedicated itself to Dumas' teachings, training an Asian man named Stephen Forrest Lee to be their champion, who faced Manhunter under the name Dumas. The Order fractured as a result of its champion's loss, allowing one radical sect to emerge that trained as 
Azrael. They bolstered the organization's power by assassinating or kidnapping their opponents and disseminating false information. They accumulated riches and resources as well. However, Valley was indoctrinated by them and he fought against his conditioning for a long time. As a superhero, Azrael is designed to be cold and uncaring, which is exactly what he needed to be during Nightfall. He's barely competent at what he does and even when he succeeds, he doesn't act like a hero. Apart from the trademark, insane zeal that defined all comics in the 1990s, he lacks any trace of personality. He did, however, act as an agent of vengeance for the Order of St. Dumas. Azrael encounters Batman in Switzerland, joined by his butler Alfred, who had flown there to investigate the mystery surrounding Azrael's father's murder, the nature of which had accidentally sparked a riot. Interestingly, the encounter was when he had been sent as a hitman by the Order of St. Dumas to kill a weapons dealer. Despite their initial animosity, Azrael goes on to save Bruce from Bliss, Leia, at the very end of the fourth issue. Nomus chastises Azrael for sparing Bruce, accusing him of dishonoring the name of the Avenging Angel, to which Jean-Paul responds that he is no angel, implying that he has taken control of the system. Thus, he ultimately rejected the Order's harsh and heartless methods in favor of the more humanitarian activities Batman promotes. Knowing Wayne's true identity, he returned to Gotham and began collaborating with Batman. He admired Batman and aspired to be his successor, constantly associating himself with the Batman family in Gotham. After Bane shattered Batman's back, Azrael assumed the mantle of Batman, only to reveal himself to be a crazed murderer who was only interested in punishing those perceived to be sinners. He murdered serial killer Abattoir in one occasion, knowingly allowing other captives to die in the process. As a result, Batman had to intensify his treatment and rehabilitation with Lady Shiva in order to confront Azrael, eventually overcoming the crazed zealot and forcibly removing him from the Batman role. A new Azriel arise, a man named Michael Lane. From 2009 to 2010, Azriel Death's Dark Knight was a three issue miniseries. It saw the emergence of a new Azriel, a guy named Michael Lane, dressed in a white tunic with red accents. Azriel's mask was changed to resemble armor during DC's Rebirth era, and his appearance in Tales from the Dark Multiverse Batman Nightfall envisaged a fusion of Azriel and Batman's most renowned costumes. Michael Washington Lane was born in Gotham City and attended East. In high school. He was awarded a football scholarship to Gotham University, where he was a linebacker for the Nighthawks until his scholarship was withdrawn his sophomore year when he assaulted his coach. He enlisted in the Marine Corps and served in the Iraq War for two deployments before returning home to work as a beat cop in his old neighborhood. Lane married Shantae Coles, and they had a son named Henry Michael Lane. But Henry was killed in a vehicle accident when he was three years old, and his wife committed herself shortly after. Marion and Gwendolyn Lane, his older siblings, were ritually murdered murdered by a demonic sect, prompting him to finally have a mental breakdown. Batman takes part in an isolation chamber experimentation in a pre-crisis golden age narrative, which involves him being locked within a chamber for long periods of time. Dr. Simon Hurt, who was mad, carried out the experiment. Commissioner Gordon was substituted by Commissioner Vane at this time. Vane became concerned that Batman may not be here for a long time after he left the project, so he devised a plan to replace him. He worked with Dr. Hurt to create replacement. Batman in the event that the original Batman died. According to Dr. Hunt, Batman's most probable motivation for battling crime stemmed from a personal tragedy. As a result, they chose policemen recruits and psychologically traumatized them to turn them into Batman. The three ghosts of Batman were formed as a result of this experiment, with Lane taking on the role of the malevolent Bat Devil. For a short time, he haunted Batman, tormenting him for the unattended destruction of the three. During the Black Glove's grand plan to destroy Batman, Lane later served served as an agent of Dr. Hurt. He was operating a helicopter during Hurt's escape attempt from Arkham Asylum, but the chopper exploded and plummeted into the lake after he lost control of it. He was supposed to be dead, but he reappeared as Azrael, the Angel of Death. After previous agent Abraham Arlington was driven insane by the supernatural suit of sorrows, the Order of Purity, which was another splinter order under the Order of St. Dumas, chose Lane to be their next Azrael. After Lane acknowledged helping kill Batman in a confessional, his priest Father Day confronted Lane with with Adrian Peritino, Felicidad Gomez, and Leland McCauley. Lane
consented to take the mantle and when they were assaulted by the seven men of death, he was obliged to use the suit right away. The armor was made from the melted swords and breastplates of a number of order soldiers who had died in battle. The suit was created to be worn by Azrael, the Order of Purity's hero, but only in exchange for a high personal cost. Much of the first issue of this comic is devoted to fleshing out the details of this new Order of Purity and also the backstory of the Michael Lane character. And both have a degree of moral complexity to them that makes for fascinating theater. When Merlin and the League of Assassins arrive to reclaim the powerful suit of sorrow, the issue shifts into high gear. Lane has flashbacks of significant events in his life in the second issue. The coach he thrashed after losing his temper is seen. His time as a soldier, returning to Gotham as a detective, the loss of his son, his wife's suicide, the murder of his family, tormenting Batman as one of Dr. Hurt's Batman, being Batman and being Azrael. This is also the issue in which Lane learns of the suit's risk. Partially confessing, the members of the Order of Purity show him his predecessor, who went insane after six weeks. His tormented mind has numerous layers, and the sect is clearly not telling him the truth, which allows him to revote against his controllers. Salvation is a mental blade that influences the mind, while the others cauterized wounds as it cuts, highlighting the skills of his blades. The duel between Nightwing and this new Azrael takes place in the third issue of the series. We also learn more about the politics and origins of the Order sect that is driving this new Azrael. The duel ends in a draw. The Nightwing takes care of the suit of grief and both swords, letting him operate in a city as Azrael. He'd have to answer to Nightwing if something went wrong and he never gave in to his violent urges. Later, members of the Order are debating the future of their organization when they are disturbed by Lane, who intends to destroy them. In exchange for devotion and allegiance to the Order, Lane is taken to Leland McCauley's brownstone and offered the place to be his residence and base of operations. Lane accepts and takes their place, reasoning that he can always assassinate them afterwards. As Azrael, Lane begins hunting out evildoers, punishing them for their misdeeds and bringing genuine justice to them. However, fans of Azrael were disappointed as was pointed out by many because they had largely expected the return of good old Valley. Keeping that aside, using Lane was an intelligent way to weave Azrael further into the Batman mythos. I trust you have not forgotten me, Batman. Azrael. What makes Azrael so deadly? Azrael possesses a wide range of abilities. Jean-Paul's physiology has been boosted by being grown in a test tube and subjected to numerous DNA experiments while still in his fetal form. This has given him increased strength, speed, and reflexes as well as increased durability. Accelerated healing, enhanced senses, enhanced durability, enhanced stamina, enhanced strength, enhanced speed, and enhanced reflexes are all abilities he possesses. Azrael has developed into a far superior hand-to-hand fighter thanks to the system's mental conditioning. While he does not have Batman's degree of competence, he has proven to be more than capable of dealing with most physical dangers. This was primarily owing to his mental illness which was easily exploited limiting his full combat capabilities. Azrael may become a greater fighter than Batman if it weren't for this reason, according to Batman. The system has given him a wide range of abilities including acrobatic and martial arts capabilities that even the most seasoned athlete would find difficult to match. As a result, he's a formidable opponent. In addition to these abilities, his skills were polished through training with Bruce Wayne, making him potentially as skilled as Batman, despite his inadequate experience and finesse. However, due to his physical talents combined with his skill, he was able to defeat Batman, Bane, and Nightwing, and was even given the position of League of Assassins head by Ra's al Ghul. His understanding and proficiency with computers as a computer science postgraduate student surpasses Tim Drake's and is comparable to Oracle, the former Batgirl. He is frequently referred to as as an intuitive genius, despite the fact that he is neither as clever nor as swift as Bruce Wayne. Furthermore, he has a relatively restricted knowledge base with which to employ that would or could be a significant amount of intellect. Last but not least, his deep-seated conditioning, as had been done by the system, was one of the main reasons behind him being a ruthless and cold killer whose anger knew no bounds. He was psychologically experimented on as he grew up and he continued to have many genetic changes that would make him stronger. His head was flooded with cult conspiracy that sculpted him into the perfect insane weapon ready to wreak havoc on Gotham City. James Gordon.
The time for your penance is come. Insane versions of Asriel in various forms of media. The character of Asriel has an inherent insane quality to it because of all the conditioning and trauma that the people who take on the mantle of the Angel of Death have gone through. However, Asriel, played by James Frame, makes his live action entrance in the season 2 of Gotham, and this is by far the craziest we have seen Asriel. Theo Gallivan, a millionaire entrepreneur who is secretly the heir apparent of the Order of St. Dumas and uncle of Silver St. Cloud, is this incredible nation's alter ego. Gallivan is the brains behind the Maniacs, a gang of psychotic criminals that terrorize Gotham, but he betrays them by assassinating their leader, Jerome Valeska, and making him a national hero. He is elected mayor of Gotham with the grudging assistance of Oswald Cobblepot, or Penguin, whom he blackmails into assassinating the other mayoral candidates by keeping his mother, Gertrude, hostage. When Tabitha, Gallivan's assassin sister, kills Gertrude nevertheless, Cobblepot swears vengeance and forms a fragile partnership with Detective Jim Gordon to haul Gallivan to justice. Gallivan's corruption is finally exposed, and the two of them stop the Order of St. Dumas from killing Bruce Wayne, destroying his criminal empire and killing him. Hugo Strange revives Gallivan under the codename Patient 44 in Wrath of the Villains Pinewood. Strange's experiments, on the other hand, have altered Gallivan's psyche. He has no recollection of his previous life and thinks himself to be Azrael, an old immortal warrior who defeated the Order's foes. Strange takes full advantage of Gallivan's hallucinations by commanding Azrael to assassinate Gordon and providing him with a sword, mask, and medieval armor. Gallivan attacks the Gotham City Police Department, murdering numerous policemen and injuring Nathaniel Barnes, the department's captain. Gallivan is about to kill Gordon, Alfred, and Bruce Wayne at Wayne Manor when Cobblepot and his sidekick Butch Gilzing blow him to pieces with a rocket propelled grenade launcher in Wrath of the Villains Unleashed. His other notable appearances include in the Batwoman episode A Secret Kept from All the Rest, Azrael's name is referenced as Lucius Fox's journal. While Jean-Paul Valley's Asriel outfit is briefly seen on display in Dr. Trapp's museum in the Harley Quinn animated series episode Trap, he also has multiple appearances in Batman video games. Asriel is a character that has a long legacy in the Batman mythos, a tormented soul, not a hero, but not really a villain. This makes the character complex and thus interesting. Some love the character while others aren't fans, but there is one thing we can all cover John. Every time he is around, things get extremely interesting. Asriel could make a comeback in the next couple of years and we are here for it. Do you think Asriel has the potential to become a mainstream fan favorite? Let us know in the comments below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. Gotham will be yours. It didn't have to end like this, Michael. The choice was always yours.